All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you're new. We are going to be discussing the huge mistake that most people are probably making in the gunsmith. And this actually came from a comment or several comments, I, I, I must say, that I've seen over time of people saying, oh, I don't care about shooting move speed. Pros don't even choose shooting move speed. They choose aim walking movement speed over shooting move speed. So, you know, all of my builds, if you're new to the channel, they're all backed by data, testing, logic, as well as in-game experience. You will never see me throw you guys a class setup that I truly do not believe in because obviously that would be misleading you. So we're going to talk about all of this today and hopefully we can clear some things up. So if you guys do enjoy the content, a like is surely appreciated and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here or you constantly watch my videos but you just haven't subscribed yet what are you doing man make it official join turbo nation today and let's get on with it let's talk about what the general community thinks about shooting move speed as far as my own community goes so here are my channel comments and you know shout out to the people who did want me to make this video i do read the comments so i appreciate all the support anyways so uh let's see here Bro, aim walking move speed is some of the most important things in a gunfight. It is what makes you harder to hit. No one cares about shooting move speed. It only determines your speed when shooting from the hip. All the pros are even choosing aim walking speed over shooting move speed. Great video still. Well, shout out to you, Nikolai. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Um, you know, I appreciate your comment, but you know what? I'm going to show you guys some real examples of shooting move speed when you're ADSing and how it actually dramatically affects the overall performance of the gun. So he's claiming that aim walking speed is one of the most important things in a gunfight. If you think about it, I don't understand how that's the most important thing in a gunfight if you're not shooting back. So if you're not shooting back, I would say you're going to lose that gunfight. However, in order to win the gunfight, you need to shoot back. So not really understanding where the logic comes from here. Again, I am not trying to bash anybody here, but it's just that I've been reading these comments and, you know, people think that I'm crazy or something like that. But uh, that's why we're going to prove everything today in today's video. Just want to give you guys a little baseline of where everything is coming from and what the general population thinks and why this is a huge mistake. So he says it's what makes you harder to hit. Let's say you're in a head to head gunfight, you're ADSing and you're strafing left and right because you chose aim walking movement speed okay he's not wrong there and let's say your opponent is trash he's missing all his shots okay so but what happens when you try to engage in that gunfight and your shooting move speed is down dramatically uh, as soon as you start shooting that aim walking movement speed gets slower so obviously the slower you are the more easier it is going to be for the opponent to hit you and kill you obviously so and also it varies if you're playing against different skill levels if you're playing against uh people in reverse boosted lobbies or uh versus playing against you know pro level type of players obviously this is going to differ as far as what your results are so i'm really curious to know what this person's kd is because you know in my lobbies they're usually super sweaty you guys see my videos i literally just post videos where i'm doing mediocre i usually get like a 2 kd but you barely rarely see me posting videos where i'm getting like 100 kills a game you know because obviously you would have to reverse boost or get extremely lucky to get those kind of lobbies to drop those amount of kills so in those reverse boost lobbies i could definitely see why it wouldn't matter as far as uh shooting move speed goes because i mean look at the competition you're playing against people who literally uh don't even play the game at all they only play like maybe once a month as far as all the pros even choosing aim walking speed over shooting move speed this is because they only have a limited amount of attachments to work with. This is exactly why you should never copy a pro player's class setup. They're only playing by the rules that are set by the league. So that's why they use what they use. So this was a very interesting comment. You're the only person I've seen who... I didn't actually say it, by the way. That's why. Go XR. Anyways, uh, on the elastic wrap attachment, virtually everyone else says it's the best attachment in the game. It allows you to drop shot and it allows you to shoot straight in a gunfight when you're taking fire due to flinch resistance. You get caught up on shooting movement speed, but never 
cover that drop shotting and especially shooting straight in a gunfight is important all right so he's not wrong in the points that he's making he's literally just reiterating what the stats tell us from what the elastic wrap does so when he says virtually everyone you know i'm very curious you know it really depends like what is this person's kd as well what kind of lobbies is he getting into it all just goes back to that what kind of competition is he getting into if you're getting into uh kds of players with a max of like 0.5 kd then obviously you can use elastic wrap uh shooting movement speed is not going to be an issue however if you're in sweaty lobbies obviously you're going to want that because better players just have more cracked movement that's just the simple facts so when people have cracked movement what do you need you need more shooting move speed just to be able to keep up your crosshairs on the movement of these players imagine in a close quarter combat somebody's like slide canceling all around you and you're shooting move speeds really slow you're gonna have a very hard time tracking that opponent and you are going to lose that gunfight so by virtually everyone else i'm not sure if he's referring to his group of friends or other youtubers i'm very well aware of youtubers who reverse boost to get their gameplay uh no hate at all i'm not a fan of skill-based matchmaking you guys have seen me you know sweat in my matches and just complain about you know how terrible my team is because of the, the the matchmaking is so unbalanced so i can see why they reverse boost however you can't really trust the class setups because again they are going against people who are of significantly lesser skill so the attachments that they use and they say oh i just got a good gameplay 100 kills you guys have to try this out this is the best class setup all my class setups are not based on you know one game where i did hella good with it it's based on testing weapon data as well as some logic and balancing built into it all right so as far as this one right here it allows you to drop shot and it allows you to shoot straight in a gunfight when you're taking fire due to flinch resistance uh this i do not agree with mainly because exclusive ace actually made a video covering flinch resistance and he pretty much concluded and even showed evidence that there's barely any difference in the flinch resistance as you can see here at least in real time there is almost no difference whatsoever they appear to be basically exactly the same however if we slow things down you start to see a very slight difference the gun itself isn't moving around as much and then if we zoom in and look at it really slow yes you can start to see a little bit the camera doesn't rotate at all when you're using this flinch resistance attachment but at the end of the day i really don't feel like an attachment that helps with flinch is really necessary in this game it doesn't seem to help enough to be worthwhile now it's obviously not going to be hurting you at all to run it and if you want to run it fine that's great but just know unlike previous call of duty games where flinch resistance would have been a huge help it really doesn't do too much in Cold War. All right, so you heard it there from the man, the myth, the legend, the weapon testing stat king himself, exclusive ace. No shade if you guys want to use it. Uh, this is just my response and I'm responding with actual facts. There's no emotion driven behind this at all. I'm literally just, you know, showing you guys why I choose what I choose. All right, so now I just want to show you guys a quick visual of pretty much the rankings of what are the fastest shooting move speed weapons in the game from slowest to fastest. So SMGs definitely have the fastest shooting move speed as far as base goes. Assault rifles come in second place uh, with the exception of the AK-47. For some reason, the shooting move speed on that is uh, slower by one mile versus the rest of the assault rifles. And then we have an outlier here, 9.74 miles per hour. This is actually the QBZ. Not actually sure why that is. Maybe the Treyarch wants people to use the qbz more or they feel like it's just way too slow i'm not sure uh tactical rifles are 6.26 to 6.77 this is the burst rifle like the m16 aug and the new carve 2 lmgs are all 6.26 miles per hour and sniper rifles are 5.13 miles per hour so the reason why it says critical case by case non-factor non-factor is because is it critical to have good shooting move speed on assault rifles and smgs yes it is that's why they are under the cat uh, that's why i placed them under the critical category so the main reason why is because you typically end up in closer range gunfights with these types of weapons that's why optimizing your shooting move speed is the most important especially on smgs because you are playing up close and personal in close quarter combat if you have very slow shooting move speed your opponents are literally going to dance circles around you you guys have heard me say that time and time again 
and assault rifles same thing although it's not as important as smgs but it still is critical because again assault rifles are best used within that 34 meter range and most of the maps that we play on today typically the maps that we play on do have shorter ranges as far as engagements go so that's why assault rifles smgs is fairly critical to have that shooting move speed as maxed out as possible however you know there are some cases where you can get away with it but it just really again it entirely depends on your play style so you have to be very mindful of that some builds you can get away with it just slightly but the main point of this video is do not stack your attachments that do reduce your shooting move speed now tactical rifles is a case by case because uh you know it kind of depends again it, it just goes back to how you want to build your setup that's the beautiful part about the gunsmith is hey if you want to build your m16 for example to melt people uh, up close and personal by putting on that titanium barrel you guys want to check out my m16 video i'll show you guys uh uh, a mid-range build for the m16 that absolutely deletes opponents so obviously in that case you do not want to hinder your shooting move speed if you're playing close however if you're going to use the long range build on the m16 then you do have some breathing room to allow for that shooting move speed to be reduced so non-factors lmgs and sniper rifles because generally you should be playing at a longer distance anyway with these type of weapons so shooting move speed doesn't really matter too much right, so now we're about to watch a uh, real-time example of what it looks like of the base shooting move speed here on the left versus the shooting move speed where you're putting on attachments that do help you improve your shooting move speed here in the middle versus shooting move speed that is dramatically reduced as much as possible with attachments that do reduce it so that's going to be here on the right so we're just going to play it here in real time all right so remember somebody said this only applies to when you're firing from the hip so let's check it out here All right, so I'm going to play this one more time for good measure. All right, cool. So uh, if you guys haven't really noticed by now, uh, there's obviously a clear winner here, and that should be the one in the middle. So let's take a look at it frame by frame. So what I want you guys to look for is which build is going to touch this one first right here, this little square. So let's go frame by frame. They're still going. Bam, middle one already hit it first even the base shooting move speed is significantly farther than the shooting move speed when we're reducing it as much as possible. So he's still at the door. This one's already here on the uh, yellow wall of the house, while this one's already here at the square. Boom, already off of it, still on the square now. And this guy just barely left the door. So, uh, you know, it's pretty definitive from here. This is the main reason why I prioritize increasing our shooting move speed as much as possible so we can move as fast as possible when we're engaging in a gunfight. Hopefully, you know, you guys learned a lot from this video. Uh, if you guys did, make sure to leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to subscribe if you're brand new around here to make your way back to more Call of Duty content. And if you actually made it this far in the video, I did this in the previous video where I said, okay, put down the phrase Turbo Nation in the comments down below. The amount of people who left comments, you know, it was absolutely amazing. I really appreciate all the support from you guys and I can't thank you guys enough. Today's phrase is going to be beat all odds. All right, so put that in the comment section down below so I know who my real ones are. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I will know who has watched till the end. You guys are absolute legends and I really appreciate you guys. Beat all odds, man. We all just got to like think positively in life, no matter what you're going through. You know, I've been through a lot as well you know mentally physically i've been there all but i've beaten the odds and i'm still here today uh, being as positive as possible so you know put that down below in the comments and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video see ya yo if you guys are always on your computer all day or you like to game for long sessions definitely check out gameradvantage.com for these blue light blocking glasses quite literally the best blue light glasses that you can ever find on the market. Make sure to check out GamerAdvantage.com and just learn more about it, man. There's so many benefits to keeping your eyes nice and healthy. You won't feel that strain at the end of the day and you'll go to sleep like a baby at the end of the day and that's the best part. You won't feel tired at all. Definitely check out GamerAdvantage.com. Use code TURBO at checkout.